Welcome to CBG. Now then, look what we've got here. Flying Tigers. Rather apt because we're at Newark Air Museum today. We've got one, Mr. Graham Holloway. Take a bow, Mr. Graham Holloway. This is his 1954 Tiger. And across there, we'll come to him in a minute, is Mr. Graham Towner with the 1955 T110, Tiger 110. So what we got? Well, 1954, essentially first of the swinging arm frames. Big improvement, big improvement to the old uh, sprung old. But apart from that, very similar in format to the bikes that came before it. Alloy barrel, uh, alloy, iron barrel, iron head. Uh, the, the, the carburetor compared to the Thunderbird is a little bit bigger and the cam's perhaps a little bit wilder but very little. Uh, this is essentially, the, the Tiger 110 is essentially a Thunderbird GT. Four speed gearbox, one down three up in normal Triumph pattern. This one's still on six volt. We've got the, uh, the Lucas K2F standard magneto and the, uh, and the Lucas six volt dynamo. Uh, we go across to the front a little bit here, cameraman Peter. Just have a close up on this tasty hub. Look at that. Eight inch, scalloped, air intake, nice torque arm integral with the plate like that. Stainless steel spokes, stainless steel rims. Now these these painted inserts and the paint that you see on these guards was done by one of Graham's mates who believe it or not is a painter and decorator. He does ceilings and staircases for a living, but he's made a jolly good job of this. Uh, Graham bought this in the 70s as a box of bits that came with a Triton. Built it up with what he'd got at the time, which was alloy guards and all sorts of things like that. And then uh, one of the cam followers decided to make a bid for freedom, but fortunately it didn't succeed it only got as far as the bottom of the sump if you like and uh, it didn't lock the engine up didn't well it did lock the engine up but it didn't break the cases so he put it away stripped it put it away put it in his loft for I don't know 25 years and, uh, and then decided to pick up bits and pieces such as you know original mud guards and the cells and bits and pieces like that from water jumblers and various other places uh, and then rebuilt it how long ago Graham? About six years, been on the road about six years, and it still looks as good today as the day it did it. Now, if you want to hear any more about all these bikes after I finish this bike, then you're going to have to buy the magazine, all right? But now we're going to move across there, all right, to, to the other one. Come with me. Now, this is one Mr. Graham Towner, as I said, from Beeston in Nottingham. This is a 59 model, and look at the shine on these cases. My, he spent some time buffing these, hasn't he? But I'll let you into a little secret. They're actually chrome plated. It's not an alloy head, it just looks like one. Graham's had several alloy heads on the Tiger 110s that have cracked, so he's reverted to a lower compression and uh, the, the earlier iron head and, and solved all his problems. Now come a bit closer, Pete, have a look at this. Because this has been converted to 12 volt. Um, in here, it says Alton. That is actually a French built, uh, well, most people will know this, I suppose, but it's a French built alternator. Um, I ought to mention something about Graham's crankshaft, but I'll get back to that in a minute over there. Um, where were we? There's a belt drive in here, believe it or not, but no one would know because it just looks absolutely dead standard. Um, if you have a look at these bits and pieces here, Holland, Belgium, Venlo, Luxembourg, Ardennes. There are all the places where he's travelled on this very bike. What can we tell you about it? What's this switch here for? It's a neutralise the battery that's when you leave it standing. Ah, that's to just to switch the battery off. That's a clever idea, isn't it? Otherwise the Alton alternator might drain the battery. Now when Graham was building this one up, mud guards were in short supply. Look at these. Absolutely perfect, ideal pattern, but they're actually fiberglass, but you would never know. The finish on them is superb, been done by a dream machine in Nottingham. Going on this way here. What we'll do now, we'll have a look around the other side of them in a minute. So I'll, I'll sign off for now and I'll be back to you in a few seconds. Okay, see you in a minute. Welcome back. 
Right, we're returning to uh, Graham Holloway's bike. Graham Holloway's from uh, Sutton on Trent, actually, in, uh, in Nottinghamshire. Come a little bit closer, Pete, because I've got something to show you here. Now, if you look on these first models here, on the on the first swinging arm model, look, you note know, there's no torque arm on the back brake plate at all. There's a bit of a, like a lug in the back of the swinging arm here into which it locates. That's kind of throwback from the, the rigid and the swing and the, uh, the, the sprung hub models at all. But when we look at when we look at the other one in a minute, you'll see that the later ones actually had the torque arm. Now something I missed earlier, inside here, when Graham was rebuilding this, he fitted the later type crankshaft because the early models, such as these in 54 and uh, the Thunderbirds, they had the plain bearing crank with the white metal nonsense in it. And so they put, he's put in a, a later crankshaft with shell bearings uh, from a later T110 or Bonneville or something like that. But it also, it was an alternator crank. So he's got a shaft that sticks out a little bit further than normal. So inside there, there's a big fat spacer to keep the whole thing all nice and squared up and, and in alignment. And, and the like. The carburetors, both on this bike and the one we're going to look at in a minute, were both uh, refurbished by Martin Bratby, or probably about 20 years ago, so that's a fairly good recommendation for, for Mr Bratby. Right, let's go and have a look at that one again. Now Mr Towner agrees with me and a few others that after the brake in the 54 model brake, they went to this one a bit later on, uh, which is a good break, but nothing like as good as that one. So it was a bit of a retrograde step, really. These are stainless steel, and inside here, I'm going to tell you a lie now because actually they're inside there. But the same, same sort of principle inside here, um, they normally have just like a little felt wrap round as a seal. Um, but, but these guys have, have dropped in C15 seals, which just tap in quite nicely and they do the job absolutely perfect. Uh, where are we going? Monoblock, as I say, refurbished by Mr. Bratby. Made a jolly nice job of that. Slick shift gearbox. And you're going to have to take my word for it. It works a treat. I've just been for a blast around the block on it. And it really is just what it says. It is a slick shift. It's as smooth as silk. Who needs a clutch when you've got one of these? Absolutely brilliant. Really, really good. Now then, all stainless fittings. As you can see, and then if you just, just when Pete's had a bit of a close up, if you just go around the other side again, just to what I missed last time, there's the aforementioned torque arm that was uh, that's, that was missing off the earlier ones. And if you look at that breather pipe, if you can just see it where my fingers are down there, Graham's got it just so that it blows what bit of mist there is onto his chain. Works like a Scott oiler, except cheaper. So there we go. I don't think I can tell you much more than that for now. These guys have been very kind, they've came, they've come, come here at short notice just to catch the weather and if you want to see any more and learn any more you're going to have to buy the magazine, CBG. See you, over and out. Well that's it, the job's wrapped up, we've been for a ride on them, we've done all the photographs at Newark Air Museum so the boys are getting ready to leave us. That's Mr Holloway there with his full face helmet and across here We've got Mr. Town, not Mr. Towner, as I said earlier, Mr. Town. And that's Jim Bell, who's brought his Thunderbird along just to have a look and see what we do. They're going to, uh, they're going to start the bikes up and, and disappear in a minute, so we'll go around the other side and we'll just let you have a listen to see what they sound like. Boy, thank you very much. Don't forget your fuel, Graham. Sorry. Don't forget your fuel. Yeah, 
Cheers, mate. Thank you very much. See ya. That's all, folks.